Hi, my name is Brett Statham. Welcome to Continuous Deployment with Visual Studio Online and Azure. This is the second of four videos in my series on Azure DevOps with Visual Studio Online. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at setting up continuous deployment using Visual Studio Online and Azure websites. Now, you can get the files for the slides and demos that I use in this and the other videos in this series. They're all up in a GitHub repo, and you can grab them using the links on the screen. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Azure websites. In the previous video, we looked at Azure Virtual Machines. Virtual machines are great because they give you a ton of control over their configuration. But with that control comes responsibility. You're now responsible for managing that configuration. If you don't need the dependency on the configuration of the VM itself, then Azure websites may be a better choice for you. Now, this isn't just web hosting. This is a fully scalable, manageable, production-level web platform. And just because it's running in Microsoft's cloud doesn't mean you have to use Microsoft's development frameworks. You can use frameworks like Node.js or PHP and Tomcat running Java. Uh, we also have a gallery of templates that you can choose from for blog engines, CMSs, wikis, and more. In fact, that's that list of icons that you see scrolling up and down along the right-hand side of the screen. Now, in this video, we're going to be setting up continuous deployment. So the first thing we're going to do is jump up to Visual Studio Online and create a team project. Now, a team project is a repository of all the things that you need to manage a software development project. We can do work item tracking and bug tracking, set up your backlogs. We also have a source code repository that you can check your source code into. And once we've got that Visual Studio team project created, we'll then go over to the Azure Management Portal and create an Azure website. And that's going to be the actual target production website that we're going to deploy up to. Then finally, we'll jump into Visual Studio and create our website source code. Once we've got that source code written and we're happy with it, we'll go ahead and check it into our source code repository up in Visual Studio Online. And at that point, a build definition that's been created for us ahead of time when we link the website to the Visual Studio Online team project is going to kick off and build the website. And as long as that succeeds, it'll then actually deploy the website right up into Azure for us. So let's go take a look at it in a demo. All right, I've got my Visual Studio Online account open in the browser. And to create a new team project, I can simply click on New and give the new team project a name. And I'll just uh, call it my Azure DevOps demo team project here. I'm going to leave it at the Scrum process template, but there's others to choose from. And remember, you get a source code repository with the team project, and so you get to choose its format. It can either be the Team Foundation version control format, or you can choose Git, but I'll leave it at Team Foundation, and click Create Project. That doesn't take too long to create. Once it's done, I'll click on Navigate to Project. All right, so I'm here in my team project, and we've got things that you'd expect, like backlogs and work items, etc. I've also got my source code repository, and if I click into code, I can see that I don't currently have anything added into the source code repository other than the default build process templates that just comes with the project template. And under the build definitions, I see that I don't currently have any build definitions in place. Just this is a brand new empty team project. So the next thing I'm going to do is jump over to my Azure management portal. You see that I've already got one website. This is sort of the one in the oven, if you will. Uh, but I want to go create a new one. So I'm going to click on New. And under the Compute Workloads, in the previous video, we looked at virtual machines. In this one, we're going to make a website. Now, I don't actually want to use the gallery, but I do want to show it to you. So I'm going to pop open from Gallery. And if you remember, there was that scrolling list of icons. Well, here it is. These are all these different project templates that you can choose to create a brand new website based on. I'm not actually going to use those, though. So let me cancel out of that. And again, click on New, Compute, Website. And this time, I'm going to do Custom Create. Now, you could just create an empty website and then hook up the source control integration later on. But this wizard lets me do it all at one time. So the first thing my website's going to need is a name. So I'll call this my Azure DevOps Demo Web. And notice, uh, first of all, that host name has to be unique globally. Uh, and it's going to have a .azurewebsites.net domain name. Now, if you step up from the free usage tier into either a shared or basic or standard website, you can create custom domains uh, and put them in front of your Azure website. Uh, but for me, I'm leaving it at free, and I'm going to host it off in the West US Data Center. I'm also not going to mess around with databases, but you can do database deployment with this as well. 
But remember, I set up this Visual Studio team project, or Visual Studio Online team project, with the source control repository. And I want this website to be published from that source control repository. So I'll turn on that checkbox. When I go to Next, we'll see that Visual Studio is actually only one of the many choices. You can also deploy from Git, GitHub, Dropbox, Bitbucket, CodePlex, and others. Uh, but mine specifically is often Visual Studio Online. So I'll pick that and hit Next. And now it wants to know where your Visual Studio team project is. And it's off in my Azure DevOps VSO VisualStudio.com account. And I need to authorize this link. So I'll hit Accept. And then it says, well, great, which team project over there in your Visual Studio Online account do you want to hook up to? And I already had a team project, but I want to hook it up to this demo team project. Uh, that's the one that I just created for the demo. I'll hit Complete. And now it's going out and creating that website along with setting up a continuous build definition over inside Visual Studio Online. So once this is done, we'll go take a look at that. All right, well, and that happened pretty quick. So the website's done. I can actually browse the website. If I right click on the URL over here, I'll just open it in a new window. And that's the fully qualified domain name for my website, right? Azure DevOps Demo Web .azure .net. And I see that there's just a placeholder page that's been put there for me. If I actually drill into the site's configuration on the deployments page, I can see that it has been linked up to Visual Studio Online, but if there were any actual deployments, we'd see them down here. And at this point, we don't. Let's jump back over to Visual Studio Online, though. And remember that previously on that build page, there were no build definitions, but now there is one. And so there's this Azure DevOps Demo Web underscore CD build definition. And that got created when I set up that linkage between my Azure website and my Visual Studio team project, or Visual Studio Online team project. So that got created. Now I can't actually edit it here, but we'll take a look at that later inside Visual Studio. Uh, but that's how that all, all got set up. Now, if I go to code, we still don't have any source code though. So that's really the next step is let's go make the website's source code. Now you could just launch Visual Studio, but from the portal, I actually have a handy little link that'll open Visual Studio and connect me right up to my team project. So in my Team Explorer over here, notice that it's tied me into my demo team project. That's that Visual Studio Online team project we just created. So that setup uh, has been done for me. And I'm gonna click on File, New, Project. And I wanna use a web project. This will be an ASP.NET web application. Give it a, a name down here. And I wanna make sure to turn on this checkbox to add to source control, because that's the whole point, right? Once I'm done with this, I wanna check it in and have it deployed. Uh, you may notice this Application Insights panel over here. This is showing up because I've installed the Application Insights tools for Visual Studio. I wanna talk about Application Insights later, not now. So I wanna make sure to leave this checkbox off. I'm not gonna mess with Application Insights right now. I'll say okay. And in the ASP.NET project configuration, I'm gonna use MVC. Let it add in unit tests so that you can see that they can be run for you, although I'm not going to get into unit tests here. The other thing I want to note is that because I have the Azure SDK 2.3 installed, I've got this panel over here in this project wizard to set up Azure deployments and hosting here. Well, we've already got that configured, right? We've set up our team project and our website with continuous deployment rigged up between them. So I don't want to use this configuration here. So I'm going to make sure to clear the host in the cloud checkbox. I'll hit OK. And it's going to go out and provision the project for me. And then because I told it I wanted to add this to source control, it's asking me what kind of source control. And we're going to use that Team Foundation version control up in our demo team project. Great. So I've got my website. And I want to do a little bit of customization to it. I'm going to open up my home index view. And uh, we'll just replace this Azure DevOps Demo Web. Sounds good. We'll save that up. And I want to test this and make sure that it works locally. So I'll debug it in the browser. And there it is. There's my Azure DevOps Demo Web up and running inside the browser locally. So fantastic. I've spent hours slaving away at this site, making it simply perfect. <laughs> okay. And so now what I want to do is go check it in, right? So I'm going to come back to my Solution Explorer. I'm going to right click on Solution and check in. 
I'll give it a comment and hit check in and approve the check in of these 217 items. Now, remember, I said that we've got this continuous deployment build definition. We saw it created. We haven't taken a look at it yet, though. So once it's done checking in here, I can then flip over to builds in my Team Explorer. I see the original build definition, but I also see that up here, it's been queued. So I can sort of monitor its queue status right over here. But then I can also come over here to the original build definition and view it, right? And in fact, we'll come back and do that here in just a second. So I see the queued build definition inside Visual Studio. I can also jump back up to Visual Studio Online. And if I uh, go to refresh this build page, there it is. And I should see that now under queued, there's that same queued build definition showing up in there. And I can uh, monitor its status there as well. And then over in Websites, And it may take some time for that to show, but I can then see that the deployment is happening from the website's perspective as well. So you get to see it all three layers. You get to see it in your development tool, in the Visual Studio Online dashboards, as well as up in your Azure Management Portal. So if I jump back over to Visual Studio and right-click on the original build definition and say Edit Build Definition, let's take a look at it. First of all, we see its name and that it's enabled. If I come to the trigger page, this is uh, the interesting part here. I see that continuous integration build each check-in has been selected. And that means that every time somebody checks in, this build is going to kick off and do its thing. Now, if you have a lot of developers checking in a lot of the time, that may be a little overkill to have a build deploy or build run and, and the website deployed on every check-in. So if need be, you can come change these or create other build definitions uh, for different scenarios there. Under the source settings, I see that it's watching that DevOps demo team project that we just created. If I come down to process, I see a few things here. First of all, it's monitoring that DevOps demo web solution. It's going to go ahead and run my unit test for me and make sure that they succeed. And then finally, once everything happens under deployment, it's going to deploy up to Windows Azure for me into that Azure DevOps demo web. So that's pretty cool. It's a pretty powerful uh, build definition there. So let's close that up. And we can come back over here and just sort of monitor this status here until it completes. All right, and it's done. So back over in Visual Studio Online, I ought to be able to go to completed and see that build definition completed and that it succeeded. So that's great. And from the website, I should see that now we have an active deployment. And that means that if I go back and reopen the website in the browser and refresh it, Notice that I am up at the live URL. It's the Azure DevOps demo web.azurewebsites.net. Let it refresh, and there it is. There's my site content. That's pretty cool. You saw that whole chain happen. Uh, and all I had to do then was from Visual Studio do a check in. That build definition kicked off as long as it succeeded. The deployment happened and pushed the website right up into Azure for me. Great. Well, so that was a quick demo of continuous deployment. We set up source code repository up in Visual Studio Online, along with a build definition that says, hey, whenever somebody checks in, build the website and deploy it right up into an Azure website for us. So hopefully that gives you some thoughts about how you may be able to work something like that into your own dev test workflows. So some go-dos here. Again, remember there's videos for each of the other four scenarios as well as an overview video. So feel free to go watch those. Uh, if you need MSDN, you don't have it, you may qualify as a startup uh, in BizSpark. So you can simply go to bizspark.com or follow up with me directly and I can help you get an enrollment code if you qualify. If you need an Azure account, you can create a free trial. Or if you have an MSDN subscription, you can go activate your Azure benefit. And then finally, make sure to sign up at visualstudio.com for a free Visual Studio Online account. If you grab a copy of the slides, there's a ton of links to uh, a more in-depth walkthrough of continuous delivery with Visual Studio by my teammate, Jeff Faddock, as well as links off to a bunch of resources around the content in this video series. And again, remember that there's other videos uh, in this series. Uh, the first one was an overview. We came back in and looked at creating dev test VMs in Azure. This video was on continuous deployment with Visual Studio Online and Azure websites. And there will be two subsequent videos on monitoring web apps with application insights, as well as load testing your web apps using Visual Studio Online. So I hope to see you there.